Hey, hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into the Journey with Janice podcast. I am so excited for today's episode because I'm always excited to get on here to talk about the Word of God, to talk about Jesus, to magnify the name of the Lord, to talk about what God is stirring in my spirit, and just to spend time with you. So I do not take it lightly that you take time out of your life, your crazy busy life, like we all have to listen in to the podcast. So thank you guys for tuning in. I have something stirring in my spirit, but I want to start out the podcast with just saying that God is so good. He is so good. I would love to meet up with all of you besties at an event coming up. I have a lot on the calendar tomorrow, actually, which probably be kind of late by the time you hear this, but we have our love and laughs tour in Plymouth, Indiana, which I am so excited for and just had some rehearsals earlier for that. And I'm like, Lord, thank you for the gift of humor and for the gift of laughter. I just love doing comedy. So we have that coming up. We have a holy and hilarious comedy night coming up in Athens, Michigan area at North Athens Baptist Church. That's in September. I have a Just Be book tour happening, which is so cool. Like last week, Holy Spirit dropped in my heart to do a book tour coffee shop book tour. And so we have like, I think seven or eight different coffee shops that are planned all over Michigan and in Indiana. So you can find all of those events on my website, journeywithjanice.com. Under the events tab, we also have the Arise Women's Conference, which I am so excited for. My bestie, Anna Pranger and I will both be preaching on Esther and Deborah. We have an amazing team of women that are coming to lead worship at that event. And we are just believing God that it is going to be a time of breakthrough, that we will see signs, miracles, and wonders, that it will not just be uh, uh, persuasive words, but a demonstration of the Spirit's power, as Paul says. And so we're believing God for an amazing time together on that day, which is in October. Again, all of those event details are on my website, journeywithjanice.com. Would love to see you. Would love to give you a big hug, pray for you, encourage your heart. And so come out, hang out with us. We do these events because we want to do what the Bible says, to not neglect gathering together, to do things where we can encourage one another, where we can inspire one another, we can push each other forward in our faith. And so such an awesome time to be alive. And we can look around at the craziness in this world and think, Lord, is there any hope? There will always be hope. I love that the Bible says that we have this hope as an anchor for our soul. We know our soul is our mind, will, emotions. And so we need the hope of Jesus Christ to keep our mind steady. So thankful that he's the Prince of Peace. And when anxiety and fear and worry and all those things try to come at us, that we can say, nope, we can rest in who he is. We can rest in the word of God. We can stand on the truth of his word and we can live from a place of complete peace. When the rest of the world wants to act crazy and live in chaos, we can choose to rise above that and live a life that's consumed by peace because we belong to the Prince of Peace. And so I have so much stirring in my spirit. I'm telling you before I hit the record button, I'm like, Lord, help me to communicate your heart because listen, I can say a lot of nice things. I can say a lot of fun, fluffy things, whatever. But ultimately, if my heart's not tethered to his and I'm not communicating what's on his heart to you, don't listen to me. Like it's not worth listening to. And so I've had a lot stirring in my spirit today and just felt like a release from the Lord to hop on here and record a podcast. I love this new platform because it offers video and audio. So you can listen online on, uh, you know, Apple, Google, Spotify, all the, all the platforms, and we can also put it up on YouTube. So this is exciting and different and I love it. Um, just feel like the Lord's stretching me in this season. And I've seen that in so many of my other besties lives too, where God is like, Hey, it's time for next level. Like let's, let's stretch those tent pegs. Let's, you know, do things with greater levels of excellence. And and so that's what I, where I'm at now in my journey with the Lord. He's like, okay, you've done the audio thing for like, I think four years now, and it's time to take it up a notch and, and do video as well, which is super fun. But the only thing with that is back when I used to record only audio, I could like record in my pajamas or whatever if I want to do, if I had a, something stirring in my spirit. And now I kind of have to, you know, feel like I have to like look presentable. So here we are. <laughs> And um, just, I'm so thankful for the Lord. I'm so thankful that he shows us how to do the things that we're called to. And I think so many times we're stifled and we're stopped by intimidation because we're afraid of getting it wrong or failure. Like, what if I don't know how to do that? And I will tell you that everything God calls you to, he will train you how to do it. If he says you're going to do 
X, Y, Z, then he will give you the resources and the know-how to do that. Over the last year, I definitely felt like a shift in my own heart to start doing self-publishing. And I felt like the Lord called me to do that, not only for my own ministry and things that he's put on my heart, but also to help other people. And just yesterday, I got to help my bestie, Diane, uh, publish her first book. And so that was so amazing to get to sit with her at a restaurant, hit that publish button and get her book out there. So I can't wait to hopefully have her on the podcast sometime sometime soon and to share about what God is doing um, in and through her life and her ministry. So I just love that. That's my heart to help people do what God's called them to do, which is why I have the Christian life coaching slash mentoring thing on my website. Um, that's something that you are like, Janice, I'm like ready to start doing the thing God's called me to do. Like that's my heart and my passion. So you can find that little shameless plug on my website. I have Radiant Life Coaching and on there. And that's just what I love to do. I love helping people realize their God-given gifts and talents and abilities and then use them to advance the kingdom of God, to make the name of Jesus known in the earth. And we all have gifts inside of us that he's created us with. And he wants us to use those things that he's given us for his glory. And so I encourage you, if you have something stirring in your heart and you're wrestling with like, how do I bring it from like heart to reality to just spend time sitting with him and saying, Lord, I need strategy. Like, show me how to do this. And I promise you he will. I was a little intimidated to learn how to do like self-publishing. There's a lot to it. And now I'm like, Lord, thank you for all of the resources and the training and the know-how to now know how to be able to do all of it. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to be on the other side of it. I tell you, it's worth it to step out of the boat and have faith and be bold and do the things he's called you to do. So all of that to say, I've got a little sticky note here with some notes. A lot of times I just kind of free flow, but I felt like the Lord had something specifically that he wanted me to say on this episode. So I just kind of jotted them down. So I kind of have three points here. If you're a journaler and take notes, these would be great things to write down or whatever Holy Spirit gives you to write down. I believe he's going to open our hearts to receive the things that he has for us specifically. And I love that when we, we could all go to church and listen to a message or listen to a podcast and we're all going to walk away with something different because that's the living and active word of God. And that's what he does. He's so good and he knows right what we need in this moment. And so I pray that there are rhema words in what I uh, released today that are meaningful to you and that minister to your heart. So number one is to make yourself available. I felt like such a a strong word in my spirit to make ourselves available in this season. I believe we're always called to be available to say, here, my God, send me. Where do you want me? What do you want me to do? I've had so many conversations with some of my besties this week about how God is shifting us in this season. And listen, I, I can't tell you how many people I've been talking to that have been saying the same thing. Like they felt like they've been doing this thing. They've had a rhythm with the Lord for a while and that God is changing things up. He's shifting things. It's a new season. It's time to enter new territory. It's time to expand those tent pegs. It's time to go further, go higher, go deeper in the Lord and just to do something new. Like there's a lot of newness in this season. And so if you're feeling that, if that's stirring in your spirit, I think we're kind of all in that boat right now. So you're not alone and we can be pray for each other and lift each other up in the transition process. Cause I feel like a lot of us are in that place, but I think it's so important that we stay available to the Lord, that we are not so tied to our routine and our schedule that we are uninter- uninterruptible. We have to stay in interruptible to the Lord, just stay available to him. A good example of that last weekend, my husband and I were ministering at a comedy event, which was awesome. And afterwards we ran to Walmart to get some things. And at one point my husband's like, Hey, let's go over to the electronic section. So we went over there. We were looking at computers. We got so excited. We found one that was like $200 for this like awesome computer. And then we found out it was only the monitor and not the whole computer. So it was a little disappointing, but you know, we were like, kind of looking at computers cause he's probably going to need something soon. Soon. He has his laptop put together with a chip clip. So that's fun. And so it still works. Praise God. But so we're looking at electronics and things. And one of the uh, workers came over, shout out to her. She happens to watch this and she came over and asked if we needed anything. And we didn't, we were just kind of looking and, and she kind of just kind of stuck around and we were like, Oh, okay. It's like you pray for those opportunities and those moments, like Lord, use me wherever I go, whether that's at the grocery store or the gas station or the vet's office, like wherever we are, 
like we should be available to him to use, to encourage people, to push them closer to Jesus. And so she kind of stuck around and we ended up having great conversation with her. And at one point, Danny asked her if we could pray for her. And we got to pray with her, lay hands on her, pray for her for some healing and things. And so that was a moment of like, hey, we were like going to the store, looking at a couple things, ready to go grab something to eat because your girl is hungry after events. I'm like never hungry before events, but after events, I could eat everything in sight. And so I was hungry. I'd ordered like pizza um, for us to pick up and things. And you know, it's nothing's more important than stopping and seeing the person that's right in front of you and ministering to their heart and the moment that God has them. And sometimes we miss opportunities because we're just not open to it. Or we pray for those opportunities and then God like literally puts them right in our face and we're like, we just don't see it. And so I pray that we would always have an open heart and open eyes to see the opportunities that God has given us and to, to, to make the most of those opportunities. And I think about the disciples and the word of God and how Jesus said, Hey, come follow me. And they immediately, like the Bible says, they immediately, like they just left everything and they followed him. And I think that's so important that we are obedient to the voice of God, which leads into my next point, which is staying sensitive to his leading, staying sensitive to his voice. When he says, go right, we're going right. We're not hesitating. There's a scripture that says, I will hasten and not delay to obey the voice of the Lord. And that is my heart to be surrendered and obedient to him, whatever that looks like, no matter what that costs me. I have a a quote actually in my Bible written in my little like free space in my Bible. It's by Jody Hughes. She's a revivalist. Her and her husband, Ben, are incredible. And um, it's a quote that says, I knew this call would cost us everything, but everything is nothing in service to the living King. And I think it's important that we do what the Bible says. We count the cost, but that that we that after we count the cost, though, that we say it's worth it. It's worth it to do whatever he's called us to, whether that's costing us our time, our attention, our finances, whatever that is, like it's worth it. Jesus is worth everything that we could possibly give up. And so, yeah, staying sensitive to his leading, following his voice, staying surrendered to him, knowing that his plan for you is the very best life, it, like it's the best life you could live. I was just reading in Matthew a couple of days ago. I've kind of been traversing through the book of Matthew and there's a scripture in there that says like when we want to find our lives, we'll lose it. But when we lose our lives for his sake, that's when we find life. And I've been a Christian now for almost 20 years, which is crazy. I remember reaching the point in my life where I was like, Hey, I've been saved longer than I've been, you know, was unsaved. And so it's so cool um, to be almost at my 20 year mark. It's just crazy to me how much time flies and how young I still look. Okay. And so anyway, just, um, just looking back over my own testimony, my own walk with the Lord, my own faith journey and saying like, wow, like God, this has been not the easiest life. The Bible says it's a narrow path that leads to life, that it's difficult, that few find it. But no, but like looking back, knowing it's the most rewarding and fulfilling life that I could have chosen is a life that's surrendered to Jesus, walking hand in hand with him. And so if you're someone who's been on the fence, like, I don't know if I would like, if it's worth it, do I want to, you know, live for him? I would, I would tell you if you're straddling the fence, if I were there with you, I would push you to the other side and say, yes, it's worth following Jesus. It's worth giving up everything for him that he loves you with an everlasting love. He died at the cross for you. He gave himself freely. The Bible says for the joy set before him, he endured the cross and the joy that was set before him was you, was winning your heart, was having a relationship with you. And so he gave up everything for us and he is worth living for. And so many brothers and sisters in Christ throughout all of history um, have given their lives as martyrs. They've you know, died for the cause of Christ. And I live in America. So like the reality of that happening isn't very high. Um, and I heard someone say one time that as believers that we shouldn't maybe make proclamations so much about like, Oh, I'm willing to die for the cause of Christ. If we're not even willing to live for him. And when I heard someone say that, I was like, that is so good because we're not going to die for something we wouldn't even live for. If we're not even living for him now, why would we give our lives for him? And so anyway, that just really challenged me and encouraged me like, no, like some, for some of us, he's not asking us to literally lay down our lives, you know, physically speaking to the point of death. He's asking us to lay our lives down, surrendered to him and to live a life that glorifies and honors him. And how do we do that? We live according to his word. We 
we stay sensitive to his spirit. We say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? What, what do you want me to say? So that we are giving God our best yes. We're giving God our best yes, which is my third point here, posturing and preparing to pivot. Because it's it's one thing to, you know, we're making ourselves available. We're staying sensitive to his leading. And then we have to be ready to pivot. If he says, go this way, then we're going to go that way. I love the scripture that says that he's the voice behind us telling us the way to go to walk in it. And so we have to be prepared to pivot. And so if you're someone who struggles with change, I would really encourage you to sit with the Lord and ask him to change your heart on that because we are going to go through seasons of change. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's a time and a purpose for every season under heaven. And so we go go through different seasons of life, change is just a part of life. And so if you struggle with that, I would encourage you to sit with the Lord and say, God, help my heart. I know that you're probably calling me into an area of change probably soon. Help me to embrace that, to trust you. Like the Bible says, trust him with all of our heart to not lean on our own understanding and all of our ways to acknowledge him and he'll direct our path. And so our path is going to be winding up, down, around everywhere, you know, and it reminds me of that funny meme of the people on the roller coaster and the ones like, you know, super like serious and like what I thought, you know, a relationship with God would be like. And then the other one's like screaming and their hair is blown in the wind. And then it's like what it was really like to walk with God. It's an adventure and it's never the same. Christianity is not monotonous. It's not boring whatsoever religion is, but actually walking with the Lord and doing life with him is far from it. And we have to be people who are willing to to pivot, to posture ourselves, to say, okay, Lord, whichever direction you're taking me in, I'm surrendered to it. And I want to do what you've called me to do. I think of the woman with the issue of blood and the word of God, Jesus was actually on his way to heal someone. There had been a request like Jesus come, can you come heal? And he was on his way to that place and he stopped and he turned toward the woman who reached out and touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible says there was healing virtue that, that flowed from him and he knew it and he recognized it and he stopped and he turned and he gave his attention to this woman. And he took that time to to pivot, to turn toward what the Lord brought in his path, what God put in his path, which was this woman who needed him in that moment. And he didn't say I was too busy. You know, I'm on my way to somewhere else. Like, okay, whatever. Like so many ways he could have responded, but Jesus always responded with compassion. And I love that he demonstrated for us how to respond to situations too, because we're going to have times where it's not, it like rarely is any sort of ministry convenient. Like it's, you're going to have moments where it's just not. I remember being at the gym a few years ago, which (laughs) it's been a few years since I've been at the gym. Danny and I have been like, we are so ready for the gym that's being built around us to come in because we're ready to go work out because it's been a while. And so anyway, I was at a gym at the gym a few years ago. And I remember this lady coming up to me and she was like, Hey, I love your shirt. And I would intentionally at times wear shirts that had a scripture on them because you know what, if nothing else, if someone reads it, they're reading the word of God and they're going to be encouraged and his word never returns void. So even if it's on a t-shirt, I'm sharing it. And so, um, but in the moment, Lord, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge for her. And I had some things just stirring in my spirit as soon as I saw her but I didn't say, oh, you know, I'm trying to work out. This isn't the right time. This is an inconvenience or whatever. I'm not saying I've never had those thoughts with people. This is just the story that's on my heart right now to share. And so I just right there in the middle of the gym, got to pray with her and encourage her in the Lord. And I'm like, Lord, I'm so thankful for the timing of the Lord too, that like I went there while she was there, like all of the details, like God delights in every detail of our life. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful that he just, he knows the end from the beginning. He orders our steps. He directs our path. And so, so staying sensitive to him and knowing like when we're praying, like as we go out, go out into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples as we're going out and we're reaching the world for Jesus. And we're telling people about him and we're just living a life that shines his light, that glorifies him, that he's going to bring people in our pathways. And so I pray if you're someone who like even heard that story and you're like, Janice, like I can't imagine praying with a complete stranger. Like I don't even like barely pray out loud over my food, you know, whatever. I get that. Like I remember when I first started praying out loud in front of people, like I was so insecure, like literally I couldn't even like shut my eyes because my eyelids would flutter, like, which is so weird to think now, like that was so long ago, but I know what it's like to be insecure and be in those, that place of like whatever, but just know that it's, it's not about you. It's about the Lord keeping your eyes on him. The Bible says when we keep our mind on him, he keeps us in perfect peace. And so knowing that it's about him and it's just about sharing his love with other people and you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to say the most eloquent, perfect prayer. Like that's not, that's not it at all. 
put your heart in it. And, you know, you're walking with the authority and power of Christ. And so I just encourage you to just receive a spirit of boldness so that God can use you in greater ways. And I feel like that's, that's the message today that God just wants to expand your ministry, expand your reach to use you more as you go out and about through your everyday life. It's not about having a platform. It's not about having a microphone in your hand. It's just about doing the life that God has called you to do and then doing it with him, co-laboring with Christ. And so I'm going to go ahead and end this podcast. Uh, I do want to make one quick plug. My new my new devotional, Just Be. It's a 50-day devotional. The tagline for that book is a glory-filled invitation to purposeful rest for the weary-hearted believer. That is coming out like so soon. I will have copies of that next week. I am so excited. This has been like a year in the making. So excited. I've had a lot of people that have read my current devotional called Come Away With Me, Cultivating Intimacy in the Secret Place. I've had so many people that have read that like multiple times and they're like, when are you going to come out with another devotional? I'm like, when the Lord releases me to, and he did, and we got it published last week and it is up on Amazon, but it won't be printed until like next week. So you can order it on there. You can order it through my website if you want an autographed copy. And that's all on my website under my shop as well as all my other books. And so I wanted to make a quick plug for that because it's, it's a, it's just, it's, it's anointed. The Lord's hand is on it. I was going back through doing all of my edits, gosh, like a month ago. And I was being so encouraged in the Lord. Like it amazes me how he can bring a word that is so timely. Like there would be something that I would be talking to him about and then I'd go through and do my edits. And I'm like, this is literally exactly what I was talking to you about. And I don't even like, I wrote it like a year ago. So it's not like I knew that that was what I would be editing next. And it's just the Lord. He's so good. And so I believe people's hearts are going to be encouraged through this devotional. And I believe that your heart will just fall more in love with him as you read it. So that is available again on my website. It's called just be, uh, it's up for pre-order and then I'll be sending out copies as soon as they come in, which is so exciting. And so I want to encourage you if you have something stirring on your heart, give God your yes, say yes to him and say, Lord, show me how, like, if you're like, I don't know where to start, ask him, he will give you strategy to do what he's called you to do. When I started writing, I had no idea how to do it. Like, I didn't know. I just knew I, I just knew I had messages in my heart that the Lord uh, put within me to release to the world. And so he'll show you, he will show you, would love to help you through that. If that's something you would like to do, you can contact me on my mentoring tab on my website. So let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this podcast. Lord, I thank you for every listener around the world who will tune in. God, I pray that their hearts would be encouraged in you. God, I pray that they would fall more in love with your word, that they would build their lives on the firm foundation of your word, God, that they would be rooted and grounded in you. Lord, I pray that our hearts would stay available to you, that our ears would be open to hearing your voice, that we would follow the leading of your spirit, God. And I pray that would be people who are ready to pivot wherever you show us to go, whether you call us to the right or to the left, whether you Tell us to stand still, go back, go forward. God, I thank you that we are surrendered to you, whatever that looks like, Lord. And I just thank you and praise you for who you are. God, I pray if there's anyone listening who doesn't know you, Lord, I pray that they will encounter your spirit, that you would make yourself real to them. God, I thank you that you are not hiding from us, but you desire to be known. And so I pray, God, that you would make yourself known to those people, make yourself known to us in greater ways, Lord, too. And I just bless your name, Jesus. I thank you for the opportunity to record this podcast. And I thank you for every listener on here. I speak life and blessings over them. In Jesus' name, amen.